use the analogy in the scripture that when God delivers someone and bring them out of sin and they go back to sin or they go back to their Egypt it is the same as a dog returning to his vomit something he regurgitated you know how filthy it is to regurgitate something and you definitely don't want to go back to it and put it back in your body the Bible gives that analogy as to when a person leaves Egypt. In other words, when you leave sin and you desire to go back into sin, it is that same way of going back to something that was so filthy, your body rejected it and threw it out. And then you go back and bring it and put it back in your body. That's the same way sin is because there's nothing fun about sin. There's nothing good about being in sin and, and being out there in the world is one of the worst feelings that I can remember even thinking about being in my spiritual Egypt where the Lord brought me out makes me uh, uh, glad to be saved and never wanting to go back. Because in Egypt, you got to understand that you're vulnerable. Anything can happen unto you when you're in Egypt. Because when you're in Egypt, you're not under the protective arms of God uh, as much as you would be if you're in the church. Because when you're in the church, you're under, you're, you're under the banner of God's safety, you're under his wings, you're under his protection. Because when you're holy and when you're living for God, there's a special kind of protection that comes with being in the will of God. So then you never find me bragging about how good it was in Egypt when I was in my spiritual Egypt. You see, you got to understand Egypt represents that sinful lifestyle you left. It also represents that emotional bondage, that mental and spiritual bondage that you were in when you were thinking you were doing right, but you were doing wrong. You were thinking you had it going on when you really was in trouble and you needed somebody to snatch you out the fire because you were deceiving yourself thinking that everything was all right when everything was really all wrong. As we get back to the text here, you'll find here that God was listening to the cries of the Israelites as they were in Egypt. The same way those of us that when we were in our spiritual Egypt in sin, many of you said, Lord, if you save me, I, 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 I live for you and I do right, Lord. If you bring me out of this situation, you see, some of you, your Egypt may have been the fact that you were diagnosed with a disease and you were in all kind of pain and agony. And you prayed and asked God to deliver you and to heal you from uh, this painful sickness or disease. And you promised God that if you heal me, then I'll live for you. In other words, God, if you bring me out of Egypt, I'll serve you and I'll never go back. The same thing that the Egyptian told God that if you deliver us from this bondage in Egypt, we'll never go back and I'll go back on you. We'll never turn our backs on you again. In other words, we'll live for you. And that's the reason they ended up in Egypt was because they turned their backs on God. You see, that's the important thing to remember that every time you leave God, or if you leave God, you'll find out that every time you will end up back in Egypt. There's no other way around it. You cannot uh, avoid Egypt if you turn your back on God. Because anytime you turn your back on God, you're putting yourself in a position to be in a situation of being uh, destroyed, of being abused, of being misused, and even being caught up in sin. You may even get incarcerated when you're in your Egypt because you're out of the will of God and you're out from uh, the protection of God. So it puts you in a position of being in anything or getting in something that could destroy you or your life or your relationship with God come on give God a praise in this place so
So then the Israelites begin to cry out to God. You know, many times people won't pray unless they're in some trouble. And so that's why sometimes God allow people to stumble into Egypt or get captured in their own spiritual Egypt. Is because sometimes you, your attention cannot, God can't get your attention unless you experience some opposition and some adversities. Sometimes things have to get so bad till you're almost about to lose your mind or lose your house, lose your car, lose your job, lose your family, or lose everything you have before you will start praying and saying, Lord, bring me out of Egypt because I just can't take it anymore. This is the way the Egyptian was, uh, the Israelite was rather. Every time God uh, would put them on solid ground, every time everything was going right with them and every time they had ample uh, money and, and food and crops and and god was sending rain to keep their crops nourished and everything they were they would always get too comfortable and they would turn their back on god and god would allow them to end up back in bondage or their spiritual egypt and so then they found themselves in captive and, and many theologians said they were in bondage for over 400 years. It is estimated they were under bondage in Egypt. So then they understood what it meant to be uh, in a place of being abused and misused for such a long time and to have to cry out and say, Lord, save me, Lord, heal me, Lord, deliver me, bring me out. And if you bring me out, God, I'll serve you. So then they found themselves in Egypt and praying to God and God heard their prayers. The same way many times when God does allow bad things to happen to you and to I, when we were out there in the world, it was just to get our attention. It was just a certain notice that we need God and we need his help to bring us out of Egypt. Because as long as you're in Egypt, you'll never be what God wants you to be. You'll never experience the high side of life when you're in Egypt because Egypt will always keep you down and keep you in bondage. So then God heard the prayers of the Egyptian and he raised up a deliverer, a man by the name of Moses. And so when God raised up Moses, he told Moses, he said, I want you to go to Pharaoh and I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go because I'm bringing them out of Egypt. You see, many of us, we had a Moses in our life that brought us, that helped to bring us out of our spiritual Egypt. Whatever the man of God was, the pastor who ministered to you and you got saved under that ministry, that was your Moses. You see, God used uh, my pastor. He sent him all the way from Clarksdale, Mississippi to Greenwood, Mississippi to be uh, to open up a church. And because he sent him there and he began to preach the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ, he preached repentance and baptism in Jesus name and infilling of the Holy Ghost. And while I was in my Egypt in my teenage years, I remember hearing him preaching about giving your life to God and, and I remember thinking how bad it was in Egypt. You see, everybody had their own Egypt experience. My Egypt experience may not have been yours, but mine was bad just like yours was bad too. You see, in my Egypt experience, I was, I was a thug. In my Egypt experience, uh, I was out there in the world doing things I should not have been doing, uh, causing all kind of hurt and pain to people, uh, living a life, a gangster, a gangster style lifestyle. Uh, and, and it was not a good thing. I didn't enjoy being in Egypt. Uh, but when you're in Egypt, many times you're deceiving yourself. Uh, you think you're doing the right thing but you don't understand you're destroying yourself so I wanted to come out of Egypt and thank God he sent Bishop Miller my Moses to come and preach the word of God to bring me out of Egypt so then you must understand every one of us have a Moses 
Somebody that God used to help to bring you out of Egypt. Uh, many times, many of you were in all kinds of, of relationships. Uh, some of you guys, you were thought you were done one and you thought you had it going on uh, because you could be with different women night after night. Uh, but you didn't understand that you were in Egypt too. Uh, you thought that you were the man, but you weren't really wasn't the man, you were the boy. Uh, and didn't know you were the boy. Yeah. And not only the boy, you were less than a man. But you thought you had it going on just as most people do in their Egypt condition. You're deceiving yourselves and you're thinking that you know what's right, but you don't know what's right. Because in Egypt, you're dying and you're, you're losing out and you're destroying yourself. But thank God that there is a Moses that God will send your way to preach his word. That'll let you know the type of condition that you're in. And so then you'll be able to see your condition and cry out to God, save me, bring me out of Egypt. Uh, there's some of you sisters, when you were in your Egypt land, uh, you were searching for love in all the wrong places. Uh, every time a new guy pop up and say he loved you, then you're with him. Uh, but then he gets what he wants and he leaves and and then here comes another that speaks a kind word in your ear and you listen to him and then after he's gotten what he wants then he gone and many times they'll leave you nine months worth of trouble behind for you to have to deal with on your own so then sisters you didn't have it going on in the world either because you were in Egypt as well but thank God God got Moses there's a Moses that God to send your way to come and tell your spiritual your spiritual Egypt that you have to let my people go and then preaching and ministering the word of God because the word of God releases us from spiritual bondage don't you know that it is God's word that will unshackle you spiritually it is the word of God that takes the spiritual handcuffs off of you it also also takes the blindfolds off your eyes uh, so you can spiritually see what kind of shape you're really in uh, I thank God that he sent Bishop Miller, uh, my Moses, to come and preach the truth to me. Uh, and while I was sitting in my spiritual Egypt, uh, I was in church and hearing the word of God being preached. Uh, I don't know about you, but I didn't get saved the first time I went to church. Because uh, the first time I went, I was about 13 years old uh, when we went to that particular church. Uh, so I sat there for two years uh, hearing Moses preach the word of God my Moses uh, hearing them preach about coming out of sin uh, sometimes he'll preach about living a double lifestyle uh, because that's what I was what I was living in Egypt uh, I present one look uh, before everybody else uh, but then in secret I had a whole nother side uh, all my mother knew is that I was getting good grades in school uh, but she didn't know the dark side when she wasn't around uh, in the gang lifestyle and in my book, uh, you'll find out that I was even shot at and I never told her about it uh, because this gentleman thought we were breaking in his house. Uh, uh, but there was many other occasions in Egypt uh, that I thought I had it going on uh, just as you thought you had it going on in your Egypt. Uh, but one thing I thank the Lord for, uh, that in Egypt he'll hear your cry. Uh, I thank God that no, how, how, no matter how bad uh, you are in bondage in Egypt. Uh, God will hear your cry. Uh, and God knows what we need. Uh, and he'll send the deliverer uh, to bring you out of Egypt. Uh, it's not fun being in Egypt. Uh, it's not fun being in sin bondage. Uh, it's not fun when you wake up in the morning uh, and you're depressed because when you don't have Jesus, uh, you are depressed press 
Christ. Uh, when you don't have Jesus, uh, you do not have peace of mind. Uh, I don't care if you go out and seek money. Uh, you may even get money the illegal way. Uh, or even if you get it the unillegal way. Uh, without Jesus, you're still in Egypt. Uh, it doesn't matter how much money you have. Uh, if you don't have the Lord, uh, then you're still in Egypt. Uh, but I thank God, God heard my cry. Uh, he heard me crying out, Lord, bring me out of Egypt. Uh, because I'm tired of who I was. Uh, I was tired of what I was doing. Uh, you see, one thing about it, we can never fool God. Uh, we might deceive ourselves. Uh, we might even fool a few other folks. Uh, but when you're in bondage, uh, you never deceive God. Uh, he knows what you need. Uh, and he knows where you are uh, in your spiritual angel. Uh, and so as the Lord began to send Moses uh, to the children of Israel, uh, he sent them to Egypt to deliver them out of bondage. Uh, Moses told Pharaoh, uh, he said, God said, let my people go. Uh, and they began to uh, uh, tell Moses, Pharaoh said, uh, he would not let him go the first time. Uh, he didn't let him go the second time. Uh, nor the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and then the tenth time. Uh, but God knows how to bring you out. Uh, God knows when to bring you out. Uh, you see, God could have had him to release them uh, the first time. Uh, but you see, God wanted to show his power. Uh, he wanted to show his authority. Uh, that's why he did not let Pharaoh uh, release them on the first time. Uh, because God was doing something. Uh, he was about to do something mighty. Uh, he was about to do something awesome. Uh, and he didn't want anybody taking credit. Uh, if it came out too easy, uh, then they would have said, well, it wasn't God. Uh, but after they saw the hand of God uh, ten times uh, they saw God work a miracle uh, so they had no doubt uh, that it was God that brought them out uh, because God wanted to put his signature uh, to let everybody know uh, that it was me uh, that brought you out of Egypt uh, it wasn't nobody else uh, it wasn't even Moses uh, he was just my vessel uh, that I use to proclaim my word uh, but God want everybody to know uh, that it's all about me uh, I am your deliverer uh, I am your savior uh, I am your healer uh, I'm your everything uh, that's what I love about him uh, because he is our everything uh, somebody said uh, he's our Jehovah Jireh uh, the Lord our provider uh, he's our Jehovah Nissi uh, the Lord that fights our battle uh, he's our Sh Jehovah Shalom uh, the Lord that sent peace uh, he's our Jehovah Shama uh, the Lord that is there uh, he's our Jehovah Rofi uh, the Lord our healer uh, he's our Jehovah Rohai uh, the Lord our shepherd uh, he's our Jehovah over Mechadesh, uh, the Lord that does sanctify. Uh, he's our Jehovah Sikkim, uh, the Lord our righteousness. Uh, he's the great Elohim, uh, the eternal creator. Uh, he's the great El Shaddai, uh, the almighty God. Uh, he's the bright and morning star. Uh, he's the Alpha and Omega. Uh, he's the beginning and the end. Uh, he's my lily. Uh, of the valley uh, he is the ancient of days uh, he is the great I am uh, he is uh, my everything uh, he is uh, the God uh, that he is delivering uh, and have delivered you uh, out of Egypt uh, I don't know about you uh, but I get excited uh, when I think about uh, how he brought me out uh, of Egypt uh, how he brought me out uh, of my sin uh, and my mess uh, I can't go back uh, I can't go back uh, don't go 
called back to Egypt, God delivered you. Jesus, he died for you to come out of Egypt. Don't go back. Don't go back. I can't go back. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. can't go back. Sometimes you have to remind yourself uh, uh, what you came out of. Uh, and when you think uh, uh, about how bad it was, uh, I don't want to go back. Uh, I can't go back. Uh, whatever it takes, uh, I can't go back to Egypt. Uh, I'm glad uh, the Lord saved me. Uh, I'm glad uh, he delivered me. Uh, I'm glad he set me free. I'm going to stay free. Stay out of Egypt. Don't go back. Egypt will destroy you. Don't go back. Tell yourself, I'm not going back to Egypt. I don't want to go back. I'm glad the Lord delivered me. I'm glad. The Lord saved me. Stay out of Egypt. Don't go back. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know anybody that's been saved from the time they were born. So that means every one of us was in Egypt. Some point in time in our life. And because we was in Egypt, we need a deliverer. And he came and delivered us and brought us out of Egypt. And I'm so glad that he saved me I'm so glad that he brought me out when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all and all he done for me I'm glad I thank God for saving me I thank God for bringing me out of Egypt Thank God uh, for just snatching me uh, out of my sins, uh, for bringing me up uh, out of my Egypt. Uh, I thank the Lord uh, because without him, uh, I will. Uh, I will still be in Egypt. Uh, without him, uh, I will still be in bondage. Uh, but because he loved me uh, so much uh, that he brought me out, uh, I'm glad. Uh, are you? glad are you glad that he brought you out of your Egypt give him praise give him glory for bringing you out of your Egypt say yes say yes That's right, give him worship, give him praise, give him worship. Because God did something awesome. When he brought you out of Egypt, he did something awesome. I don't know about you, but I remember how it felt to be in Egypt. So that's why I'm glad. That's why you see people praising God in this place, because you're glad to come out of Egypt. I'm glad to be out of bondage. I'm glad to be set free. I'm glad to know Jesus. Somebody say it's good to know the Lord. I'm glad I know Jesus. I'm glad I know the Lord. And I'm glad to be out of Egypt. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. 
Glory to God. I'm glad to be out of Egypt. Praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. It feels good to be free. It feels good to be out of Egypt. It feels good to be saved and sanctified on Holy Ghost Field. Hallelujah. It feels good just being out of Egypt. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you think of what God brought you through, when you think about what God brought you out, you see, you can't tell my testimony. I can't tell your testimony. You can't praise them like I can praise them. I can't praise them like you can praise them. Uh, because you hadn't been what I've been. Uh, and I hadn't been what you've been. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, God been good uh, to every one of us. Uh, and I'm glad. Uh, we're glad uh, that he brought us out of Egypt. Now give God some praise. When I think about his goodness and what he done for me, when I think about his goodness and how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance all night, all night, all day, and all night. I can dance, I can praise all day, all night, all day, and all night. know you've been blessed by the word of God that was just ministered to your heart and I want you to know that you're welcome to attend any of our services here at the Potter's House of Jesus Christ and continue to tune into us as we bring you the word of God via the television broadcast and my wife would like to share a few words with you also praise the Lord I'm Dr. Claiborne and I would just like to invite you to just to continue to tune in to the Potter's House of Jesus Christ our mission here is preparing people for heaven. Um, if you would like more information, please call the number on the screen, which is 952-944-1425, and we'll be glad to answer any of your questions. God bless you, and just continue to be blessed in the Lord. And I'm wondering, have you given your life to Christ? You can do so right here, right now. The Bible teaches us that we must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. In the book of Acts chapter 2 and 38, you can find the complete process of being saved. Peter told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now today, I hope you have made a conscious decision to give your life to Christ. I want to pray right now that God would help you to give your life to Him and you will begin to live for Him like never before. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are listening right now, whose hearts that you're touching, bless them to surrender all unto you right now. Bless them, Lord God, to be saved right now. Bless them to take on salvation as prescribed in your word in Acts 2 and 38. Bless them, Lord Jesus, to give their whole heart unto you and begin to walk according to your word and your will. We thank you right thank now you, for serving, saving our world, blessing our nation, our country, Lord. We thank you right thank now, you, God, for all the blessings that you've given unto us. Yes. We ask you right now, God, to continue to use us for your yes. will and your glory. In Jesus', In Jesus name, name we pray. Amen. Amen. Until next time, be blessed.